This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today I've got a quick check-in with the reigning world champion, Lane Norton, just four days out from defending his national title at PA Nats in Scottsdale. Lane has a battle on his hands in the 93s, but if you know Lane, you know he's up for a challenge. Before we start, make sure you tune into the grand finale of our national championship, Sub Junior, Junior Masters, and Equip Nationals starting June 2nd. Every session is stacked with talent, loaded battles, and spectacular solo performances all the way through all three days. The live stream will be up on our website under live events, and we'll also post a link on our Instagram story at powerlifting underscore America. Thank you to SBD and Aliko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com and become a member. Now, let's get to this quick check-in with the reigning world champion, Lane Norton. All right, what's up? I got the reigning world champion, Dr. Lane Norton with us. How's it going, man? Good, Paul. Thanks for having me on. Of course, man. Um, so how's it going? Um, the question that everyone wants to know the answer to is, is oatmeal bad for you? <laughs> <laughs> It's bad for you if you stress about it because idiots tell you it's bad for you. <laughs> I thought that's just the most hilarious question that you get these wild questions. Who would think oatmeal is bad for you? I just well, you got people now that say vegetables are bad for you. So it's just like, you know, I, I always thought, you know, there has got to be like some sacred cows in nutrition. It turns out, nope, there are no sacred cows anymore. I mean, if vegetables and fruits are bad for you, but I just love, you know, I just, I screenshotted that yesterday. <laughs> just like the amount of bullshit that you put up with. Um, it's, it's wild, man. Um, but you're doing God's work out there on the nutrition front, like debunking all these people and slamming, you know, all these people that are putting out false information. So I love it. Please keep it up. Um, it's huge for, for the industry, especially. So uh, I love to do it. I love to help. So no, for real though, um, let's get into the big story. We're four days out from defending your national title at PA Nats in Scottsdale. Uh, how are you feeling? How'd the prep go? Yeah, actually, honestly, uh, I haven't had a prep this good since uh, 2014 nationals when I won my first national title. Um, so, you know, before nationals last year, it was pretty good, but our work capacity was really, really low because we were just trying to keep me healthy. Um, and then before worlds, I mean, I don't think I was squatting. I didn't hit a below depth squat until two weeks out from worlds. That was like realistically like heavy. Um, because I just had this, like, um, my back flared up and I couldn't really get to depth. You know, I, I could do like a tempo to like just above parallel without much pain, but I really like didn't get right until about two weeks out. This one, I did have a little bit of a flare up. I had a couple things like I strained my doctor in January and that kind of followed me for, I don't know, like 12 weeks, 16 weeks. But I would say for the last month, it hasn't like bothered me at all. It, it actually, ironically, I strained it on deadlifts. And after about six weeks, it didn't bother me on deadlifts. It only bothered me on squat. Okay. Uh, but then during that rehab, um, my lower back flared up a little bit. But after about... You know, you know, Zach and I have gotten really good about how to treat this stuff. We've just found that if I like aggressively back off for a week or two mm -hmm. and then build back up over about four weeks, I can like it's usually about a six week and I'm back basically full tilt. Uh, and so that's what we did. And, um, you know, so for the last, I would say six weeks, I've pretty much trained completely unencumbered. Um, wow. And, but, for, you know, there was a little bit of a setback, but for the most part, the entire training cycle, we've been able to accumulate, you know, quite a bit of work, uh, which is like way different than what I've been for the last few years. So um, it's gone really, really well. I'm way ahead of where I was at nationals last year. And I would say I'm quite a bit ahead of where I was heading into worlds last year. So I feel really good about it. it like I said, it's been the best, it's been the best meat prep I've had in probably like I said, since 2014 nationals. Yeah. Um, looking at that 2014 nationals, I mean, that's when you put up a pretty massive 782 total. Um, you know, you did, you have done it at an 800, um, a little bit after that as well. 2015 raw nationals, you had, you had an 800 kilo total, but if we're just talking like what you did at worlds 742.5, and you're, I, I remember that prep going into that, that you were pretty banged up. Um, you, you weren't able to really do much. Like, you know, like you said, you couldn't get to depth, like until a couple weeks out. So it's looking like 742.5, then your chances going over that are pretty good. Is that right? If I just hit the lifts that I've hit in training, I'll go over that. Um, and, and to be fair, that was a little bit of a, of, um, 
I could, I had more in the tank that day. What happened yeah. was uh, I won on my second deadlift. Mm -hmm. And when, um, when the Mexican champ missed his, like, well, when he was going for his third deadlift, I told Ben, who was handling me, Ben Escrow, I said, hey, you know, we're tied on body weight. If he misses, I win. Yep. And I felt like the world record deadlift um, was a reach, but I felt like it could have been there. Mm -hmm. I said, he misses. Let's just load up the world record and go for it, right? Yeah. Um, because otherwise, why even take the final, you know, attempt? Mm -hmm. So, and I don't like the idea of not taking a final attempt that's meaningful. So we loaded up the world record. I missed, um, but I kind of have a sneaky suspicion that if I needed it to win, uh, it might have gone. Yeah. But, um, you know, it. Um, so I think there was some more kilos in the tank there. But like I said, I, I should be I should be set up for a total that's, you know, a decent amount bigger than that. OK, yeah. So, I mean, because just looking at the jump there you know, um, looks, you took a pretty big jump from your, from your second deadlift to your third deadlift, like you said, to pull for the world record. So, um, you, if you needed it, you certainly could have thrown 10 on, but I mean, you, you went up quite a bit. And, uh, so what was that? That's like, um, you know, almost a 15 kilo jump that you took. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, cool. So 742, um, probably had some, you know, easily 752 that day. Um, and then, like that. So, and then you just had the best prep, you know, in many years. So yeah, that, and that actually the, the, we had uh, called for three seventeen and a half until he missed his third. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that was the plan. That was yeah. the plan that we felt like, you know, one, we felt like that was a number I could definitely hit. And two, we felt like it would push him. We didn't want to put in too aggressive an, of an attempt because we felt like he might think we were just bluffing and actually go a little bit more conservative. And we, the game plan was, you know, looking at his lifts coming in, he missed a lot of third attempts. So our game plan was to really like try to push him to something kind of uncomfortable for him. Mm -hmm. And it worked out exactly that way. Yeah. Um, while we're on the topic of worlds from last year, what, at what point in the competition do you, did it kind of set in with you that you're going to win this thing? I mean, going into it, obviously, you have a winner's mindset always. You're never showing up to lose, right? But, I mean, realistically, at what point in the comp were you like, I got this? Uh, well, I don't think I ever have. You know, anything can happen. You yeah. know, you can have – I mean, I've missed deadlifts before from up-downs, you know, getting off balance. Like, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. But when he missed his second and second squat attempt, um, I was like, oh, boy, you just <laughs> opened the door up for me. You know, yeah. um, I, if I recall correctly, I think he came back and hit it on his third, but he only registered, you know, two attempts on squad. I think yeah. he hit his third. Yeah. And he missed um, bench as well. Yeah. He missed his second bench, came back and hit it on a third as well. So, he, mm -hmm. I mean, he's a tough competitor because it's really hard to miss, you know, a second and then hit it on a third. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, it's funny. My, uh, my, my best friend, Mike came with me to, to watch and, and Mike, had only watched nationals before that. And uh, he went up to Ben, you know, after, uh, after bench press and I was down by 15 kilos, but I know I've got the bigger pull mm -hmm. and I had my headphones in, but they were off. And so Ben didn't think that I could hear him. And Mike, <laughs> uh, Mike goes, Hey man, how's he doing? Like, you know, and Ben just looks at him and goes, he's going to win. <laughs> and, you know, Ben's like, Ben's like, I've seen this movie before, you know, we've done this before. And I think, you know, Ben's going to be handling me in Scottsdale as well. Okay. And, uh, you know, Ben and I just have such a great relationship in terms of, you know, I know Ben's never going to call for anything on the bar that I can't do. And it's just a matter of me going out and executing. And I know, you know, Ben is one of the best game day coaches in existence in terms of strategy. And so, like, I tell him, like, we, I do not even bother looking at the scoreboard until it gets to deadlifts. Like, yeah. I just, I focus on trying to go six for six. And, you know, I think our game plan for nationals this year is going to be very similar to the game plan that we had, you know, for worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Go six for six. Wow. So Ben's coming out, man. He's got a busy calendar then. Cause I know he's then got to go straight out to Malta right after this. Right. Yep, exactly. And but, I saw he, him and Leah are traveling around, you know, the East coast right now as well. So uh, I've never met Leah and I was hoping to be, cause you know, Ben and I go way back. So I actually coached Ben for bodybuilding all the way back in 2007 was wow. the first time we ever, because we knew each other from the bodybuilding.com message boards. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of, you know, really come full circle, but yeah. I've been wanting to meet Leah because, you know, they've been together for a while and, um, 
you know, it just kind of worked out that she's leaving the day that he's flying in here. So, oh. um, but it's, it's super cool to watch her, um, you know, as a, as somebody who has a son who has autism, um, mm-hmm. it's cool to watch, you know, somebody, you know, on the spectrum, you know, doing so well and being such a great representative for the sport. Absolutely, man. She's such an inspiration. And she, from every account that I've heard of people who actually know her, she's just one of the sweetest people in the game. Um, and just, she does so much. I mean, she reft a meet for us out there in Scranton uh, last year. And I just remember seeing this young 63 kilo, like sub junior um, on the platform, hitting her third deadlift. And the camera angle is from behind. And you see Leah up there as like one of the front side refs. And she's just like nodding her head like this. I'm just like, what a cool moment is 63 sub junior, 63 world champion, like best lifter in the world, you know? Um, so very cool. Um, we'll make that happen someday. I mean, uh, you have any plans to come out to Malta? I mean, it's a great place to go <laughs> for travel. Yeah, I wish I could, but my travel calendar has just been so crazy. Um, yeah. And I've, I've got, so I get my kids week on, week off. Yeah. And so I really try to limit my travel all weeks. So I have my kids. So it just worked out that I didn't have them this week for nationals. Although my daughter was really disappointed uh, yeah. because she got to come to nationals last year in Orlando and she loved it. Um, yeah. She, I even got to take her up on the, on the metal stand and like get the metal with her and stuff. It was great, you know, but, but we did our ritual. She painted my nails, you know, <laughs> so we're ready to go. That's amazing. Yeah. I was going to ask if she's going to be there last year. It was father's day and it was such a cool moment. And yeah, it was. And, you know, you and uh, Ray Padilla both had your kids up there uh, on the on the podium and everything. So that was super cool. Um, yeah. Now Father's Day is going to be during, the I think, the last weekend of Worlds. Um, so, yeah. Um, so getting back to the World Championships, um, after the World Championships last year, I remember you made a post and you said, I'm going to take some time off. I'm going to, like, step back um, from the barbell for a minute. And I remember I DM'd you and I was like, no, no fucking way. You're stepping back. I've seen, I, 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 I've seen your training too much. I know that you can't really walk away from it. So how much time did you actually take off? Uh, I mean, I took about a week and a half off from lifting. I've never done that before. Uh-huh. Um, I had a lot of things going on in my personal life at the time. And, um, you know, I was just kind of like, well, I, you know, this was something, you know, originally my goal was to win, you know, an open world title. And I got very close there for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always tell people, I'm like, you know, if you have a dream, sometimes, uh, sometimes it doesn't happen the way that you planned it out. But, you know, sometimes it's, it's uh, in some ways better. You know, the fact that it took me seven years to get back and it was masters, but still uh, was very, very meaningful to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was actually uh, Ryan Lapidat uh, DM'd me and he was like, pretty much said the same thing as you, but he said, he said, he's like, you worked so hard to get back to here. He goes, make them take it from you. Yeah. And I was like, I remember uh, listening to Kim Wolford on the podcast and I think it was actually the King of the List. I think it was Ryan interviewing her. Yeah. And he said, you know, would you like, would you try to go, I think, for like as many world titles as you could, or would you, you know, get to a certain level? I think like if you broke the all-time world re- world title record, would you, you know, step down? And she goes, they're going to have to take it from me. And I just remember thinking that is way more in line with how I am. You know, it's, and you know, when you're, when you're an athlete, you know, either if you leave when you're on top, people say, well, they retired too early. Yeah. You know, they, they should have like gotten more, but then you have one bad year. They all see, they stayed around too long, you know, whatever. Now they're I think, up and yeah, but what, what really, what really actually made the difference for me was asking myself the question, am I still passionate about this? And the answer is unequivocally. Yes. Awesome. Like I, I still get butterflies when I go in for a session. Uh, I'm still, like, you know, anybody who's seen me train in the gym knows that I'm like the most fired up, passionate oh, yeah. dude. And it's not like anger. It's like, I'm just excited to do this. And um, yeah, when it comes to like competing in powerlifting, I, I remembered, um, so in, at Worlds, um, yeah, I was just so happy to be there. I told her, I'm going to be the happiest guy on the platform. I may look angry, but I'm happy. Yeah. And uh, before... Uh, before deadlifts, you know, down 15 kilos. I feel pretty good about my position, but you know, you still, it's still 15 kilos and he doesn't have a small deadlift. Yeah. Um, but I, I went up to Gabriel and I fist bumped him. I said, let's give him a show, you know, and just smiled. Cause I remember thinking, you know what? 
regardless of what happens, win or lose, I have worked so hard to get back here. I'm going to enjoy this no matter what happens, because like, there's no better feeling than the feeling to be able to like put it all on the line. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, um, I mean, I've been talking with a lot of super high level athletes on this podcast and they all kind of say a similar thing, which is that when you're having fun, that's when you're going to perform your best as well. And when you're all stressed out and freaked out and, and putting too much pressure on yourself, then you, you don't perform as well. So I think the fact that you were in the moment and, and having that ability to, you know, really be present. And like you said, to fist bump your opponent and say, let's put on a show. I mean, that's, that's just giving me goosebumps. I wish I would have been there to get that on video. Of you guys <laughs> fist bumping. I mean, that is just so sick. Um, such a great mentality and mindset. I'm pumped to hear that you say that you're going to keep doing it as long as you're excited because you know, you're very excited. And so I think you're going to be around for a long time. And so it's great for the sport to have someone like you, you know, representing the masters last night, we recorded the podcast for uh, Malta preview show. And, um, one of our guys noticed, um, I think it's in the 93s. If you scroll way down, you'll see Dave Ricks listed. I, I can't remember if it's a 93 or 105. He's in the open and he's going to be trying to push the, the open squat world record. Um, and you know, he's, you know, what is he an M3 now or something? Like, it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, he broke my world record, you know, yeah. like I remember when he came back at uh, nationals in 2015 and I think he finished like 10th or something like that in the open. And it was me and Jesse Norris were the top two guys. Mm -hmm. and uh and then ls uh finished in third although we got bumped to first and second when when jesse popped for i, th I think he had like taken a pre-workout that had like a banned substance in it yeah um and i remember all of us thinking oh this is a really nice story for david and then like a couple years later it comes out and breaks world records and at i think it was nationals and 2018 i think it was pushed mm -hmm. jesse to the absolute maybe it was 2017 pushed jesse to the absolute limit final deadlift to beat him i mean just an incredible story and you know when, when everybody says like when everybody asks about my age you know when david broke the world squat record i said well i just got 23 years to catch him yeah exactly you got plenty <laughs> of time to train for it that's right yeah <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, no, it's, I mean, inc I, it's incredible. And anybody who's ever seen a Dave Ricks meet knows you'll watch his opener and be like, "There's no way he's got any more in the tank." And then he'll be up by eighty pounds or you know forty <laughs> kilos by his third attempt. It just it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, um, so this Open World Championships, the biggest in history, um, and here he is. I uh, just pulled it up, ninety three kilo, um, nominated in twenty second. I mean, twenty second in the world, still born nineteen fifty nine. Man, incredible. Yeah. That's so incredible. All right, well, let's get back to um, your competition coming up here in four days. How much do you know about your opponent, Michael Garazzo? Um, this is the first time last year you, you at Nationals, you you didn't have, I mean, Ray was there, Ray Padilla was there, but you pretty much didn't have too much competition. But now you got a guy here that's right on your heels. Yeah, I've seen Ray has actually like made some improvements too. Oh, yeah, so, Ray too. Yeah. Um, but I, th I think, you know, going to Nationals last year, I kind of knew – you know, I don't want to sound disrespectful, but I kind of knew like if I came in and hit my lifts, I would, I'd be tough to beat. Yeah. Um, yeah. We did look up Michael. Obviously we do like, you know, our homework. Um, and uh, you know, he's, it's kind of hard to get a read on him because he's coming down a weight class and he's coming over from USPA. Mm -hmm. um, but he did put in a really good total, uh, you know, as his qualifying total, I think it was, I think yeah. it was five kilos five or five or seven and a half kilos under my world record uh, world record world title key, uh total yeah seven um, yeah and he did put in um you know some some big third attempts there so you know there's there's his top end is is very very competitive mm -hmm. um so you know like obviously i looked at that and was like okay like actually got excited like i love <laughs> you know as if you if you remember those days when you know me and LS were going back and forth mm -hmm. and Bryce Lewis when Bryce was a 93, you know, those were, I mean, God, me and LS had some epic battle. LS joked one time, he's like, I think Lane probably took three years off my life. And I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I think you probably took five off mine, you know, yeah. just from stress. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I I I actually welcome that. I think it's great. I love having more competition. Like to me, that makes it fun, you know. Of course, like it's, it's nerve wracking. It's, you know, you get the butterflies, you get nervous, all that kind of stuff. But like, that's, I don't, I like that. Like, yeah. that's, that's what makes it fun. Like if it's just, if, you know, you walk in and there's not really that much competition, like you don't perform to the best of your ability. Like there's, it's, it's not going to push you as much. So, 
Yeah, I, I love that. I love that about the depth of, you know, uh, competing in the IPF is like just top to bottom. There's so many guys. Uh, so, yeah, I, I know he's got a big squat. I know he's got, you know, his bench press and deadlift are also good. So it's it's going to be fun. But, you know, really when it comes to this kind of stuff, like we, the way Ben and Zach and I treat it is, okay, we're aware of this, but we still have to play our game. At the yeah. end of the day, this is this is like golf, you know, mm -hmm. like we have to go in and hit our lifts. And, you know, I, I'll never forget, you know, I'm, I'm a Matt Gary disciple, which is, you know, we hit our lifts and if we hit our lifts, we put the pressure on everybody else. Right. I'll, exactly. I'll tell you, I was not the strongest person when I won nationals in 2014 or 15. I don't think I was the strongest person there. There were other people hitting, you know, bigger lifts in competition. But what you find is when you're known as somebody who's really consistent and you execute and people also know that when the pressure is on, you're, you probably aren't going to miss, mm -hmm. at least in my experience, people start, making mistakes they put a lot of pressure on themselves you know that sort of thing so at the end of the day you know we're just going to focus on hitting our lifts and you know if somebody beats us then you know tip the cap um but all we can do is just focus on you know hitting our lifts and and putting putting that impetus on you know putting the impetus on myself mm -hmm. to go out and execute the way i know i can execute yeah, for sure. I'm a huge Matt Gary fan, Matt Gary disciple here myself. Um, we did like a super long three hour episode talking all about this kind of stuff, strategy, attempt selection, whatnot. So um, yeah, I don't know who his coach is or what, but um, I know whenever I posted the story of who wants to smoke with Lane Norton, um, he replied and said, this guy does. Nice, <laughs> so, nice, so nice. He's ready. I mean, and, and you know, those USBA lifters got fire, you know, kind of fiery competitors out there as well. So I think it's going to be a fun one. It. I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm all about it. So a um, couple more questions. And I'll let you go because I know you got a super busy schedule. Um, is is that coming out too then? No, it's actually able to make it. So he's still in the middle of his PhD data collection. Okay. Um, so he was able to go to nationals last year, but obviously not worlds. Okay. Um, but you know what? Like me, him and Ben, him and Ben are cut from the same exact cloth. Like mm -hmm. we always, we have a, we have a, you know, we have a group call. You know, we had a group call a few weeks ago. We had a group call before Worlds. Um, you know, one of my favorite things was, you know, when him and Zach are talking and like they're pretty much just saying the same thing without having like reviewed it previously. So they're on the same page. Yeah. And Ben just goes in and he's like, you know, well, you know, if it comes down to the third deadlift, you know, Lane's battle tested, you know. Yep. So that's yep. like whenever you get a compliment from Ben Esker like that, you know, that's that's great. I think, you know, um, at least in this arena, I'm very confident in, in what I'm able to do. You know, yeah. like I, I made mistakes on the platform. I miss lifts, you know, that happens, but uh, I'm pretty mentally tough. And I know that like just missing a lift or having things not go exactly according to plan is not going to rattle me. It's not going to shake me, um, mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, you know, I, I really like the, um, I, I recite this as an affirmation. Uh, and it's a Forrest Griffin quote from when he was going to fight Rampage Jackson for the world UFC lightweight heavyweight title. Um, so this was like probably 15 years ago, I want to say something like that. But he's, they asked him, you know, what do you need to know about this fight going in to win? And he said, all I need to know is I've done everything I possibly can do to prepare and I will never quit under any circumstance. And, uh, you know, I think when you go in with that kind of mentality and then you just, you know, let, like to me, all the pressure is on Ben right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because he's not going to put anything on the bar that I can't do on that day. Yeah. And all I've got to do is just go out and do what I do. Yeah. I mean, you go out and lift, you know, get hyped up like crazy, get screaming in the back room. Everyone can hear you in the front and, uh, and then just go out there and hit the lifts. I mean, and Ben's been, like you said, all the pressure's on Ben to put the right numbers on the bar, make the right calls. Yeah. And then same thing for Michael, um, his coach, which I don't know who it is, but, um, you know, I hope he's got a, I hope he's got a good game day coach because you're bringing like one of the best in the world as your game day coach. So that, that could end up being the edge is that you're going to have the exact right calls. Um, and someone like Ben, I mean, he was just at Sheffield, right? Like he's, on, he's been on the biggest stages. He knows when to go and challenge a call, things like this. Um, he knows all the rules. He's got all the plays in the playbook. Like it's like talking about a quarterback. He's got the whole playbook open to him. Right. So yeah. Um, that's super exciting. Um, one last question is about your cut. How, how is the cut? Um, how do you, I know going into IPF worlds, I watched, it was super smooth. Um, is it still smooth going into this one? Oh yeah. I'm actually uh, in a better position going into this one than I was in IPF worlds. Um, okay. 
and just, you know, I'm already out in Arizona a week early, you know, like uh, I'm going to get adapted. Like I didn't get as much sleep last night as I wanted to, but you know, that's, you know, I'm, I'm up at five 30 cause it's eight 30 East coast time. And usually I'm up at, you know, six 30, but this will be good because I'll have some time to get adapted to West coast time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I, I, I actually, my focus right now is making sure I don't get too light. Um, okay. because I've, I've had that issue before and it usually manifests in like my bench press, not showing up as well. So, mm -hmm. um, I want to, I have a number in mind that I want to hit that I'm not going to share on this just because I don't get, want to give everybody the, the information. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that is, uh, one thing that like, I do think is an advantage for me is I know I like, I have this down to a science, you know, this isn't a, this isn't a difficult thing for me. Yeah. Um, and I can pretty much, I mean, I showed, I'm like, this is, uh, you know, I said, this is the body weight I targeted and I weighed in at exactly that, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I think when you, when, and you know, usually I don't have issues with cramps or anything like that because of my rehydration protocol and just how I prep. So like, usually what I have to do to make weight is super, super mild. Um, so I'm, okay. I'm, I'm in a good position. Yeah. I mean, for you, it's literally a science. You're a doctor. Um, nutrition is your thing. So, uh, this is good advertising, uh, you know, for, <laughs> for all the carbon diet app, is it called? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, cause yeah, man, you nailed it last time at worlds as well. So, all right, man. Well, I don't want to keep you for too long. We'll, let's, we'll do a recap with you. We'll get you on here for like a full hour. I'll ask you all the backstory. You can tell all the stories to the new PA audience out there. Cause I know you've been on King of Lips. Ryan does amazing. He's my hero. Um, and, um, you know, but we'll get a more in-depth story after, as we lead up into the buildup into worlds and stuff like that after Malta and all this. So, um, so for everyone out there listening, he's, he's lifting 2 PM sat this Saturday, June 3rd, it's going to be an epic battle. The session is absolutely stacked. LS is in there. Um, we got Anthony McNaughton in the one Oh fives, the one Oh five, you know, junior juggernaut, who's going to throw down like a nine twenty total possibly. Um, so this is like a prime time session and we're going to do a ton of media around it. So make sure everyone tunes in and uh, cheers on our boy here, Lane Norton. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Peace out.